Hello, my name is Sean Adams. I'm an actor and the resident playwright of Gamut Theater in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And since none of us can enjoy the theater at the moment, Gamut has put out a call to some of the people that work there to see if they can share some of their talents. And my talent that I'm going to be sharing with you all is called origami. Origami is a Japanese art form. It's uh, the art of paper folding. Basically, you're going to turn a regular piece of paper into uh, a tiny little sculpture. See here we have a crane, which is one of the most common uh, origami forms. There's all sorts of different uh, patterns and things you can make. You can make all sorts of flowers and animals and objects. So it's uh, all sorts of stuff, but this is a good one to start with. Uh, it's pretty simple, relatively. Um, it's also, cranes are a symbol of good fortune. There is a uh, legend in Japan, where it, anyone who makes 1,000 paper cranes uh, gets a wish granted. There's also a very, very sad story called Sadako and 1,000 Paper Cranes, which was actually the first play I ever saw in elementary school. It was maybe actually a little bit too sad to show to elementary school students, so, you know, viewer, viewer discretion is advised if you uh, look up that story. But uh, let's stick with the happy thoughts for the moment, and let's learn how to make paper crane. To make our crane we're going to need a square piece of paper. Now they sell specialized square origami paper at craft stores and stuff, but since we're social distancing we're not going to go out and buy any. You can actually use any piece of paper as long as you make it into a square. So we're going to start with this rectangle piece by folding it from corner to edge to make a triangle shape and then the excess can be removed to make a square. Fold one of the corners over to the opposite side of the page, making sure that the corner edge is flush with the opposite edge. You can really use any piece of scrap paper you have lying around. Just make sure that it has nice sharp corners. You don't want anything with rounded edges or torn edges because that's going to leave you a gap later on when you want a nice crisp sharp edge. And then you can remove the excess hanging off the end. You can either use scissors, or if you're feeling daring, you can fold it and tear it along the fold. But as you're doing this, make sure that you are keeping a nice straight line. It is important to have all of your edges and corners nice and crisp. Uh, using something that's not quite a square is going to make your job a whole lot tougher, especially if you're just learning. So if you wet the edge of the fold, it will tear a whole lot easier. And if you're feeling really particular, you could track down a ruler or something to make sure that the square is indeed square. But I mean, who has the time? And who has a ruler these days? I don't have a ruler. And then if you tear very, very carefully, make sure not to take off the corner as you get to the edge of your paper. Yeah, I took off a piece of the corner there. Uh, so don't do that. Use scissors. Be smart. So once we have our square, we can open it up, and we are going to fold it from corner to corner on both sides. So we should have a big X of folds going across the center of the paper. Now when you're doing these folds, you want them to line up edge to edge, and the corners to be bisected evenly by the fold, if that makes sense. And then you're going to take this little pocket here, made by those folds, and open that guy up. You are going to take the edge of that corner and tuck it down so it is flush with the opposite edge, which is going to make a little square. Get rid of the little crumb that was sticking to your paper that was on the table. And now you can see we've made a little square. 
We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Open up that triangle, fold the tip of the triangle down so it is now flush with the base. And you should have what was once a triangle is now a square. Make sure you crease those folds so they will stick. And now we got a little square. You can see how the paper is folded and if you open it up again, you can see all the lines we've got. So to review, we fold it diagonally, make an X, and then opened up those folds and folded them down to make a square. Now this next part is going to be a little tricky. Okay, so if you get stuck at any point, make sure to pause the video, rewind, and take another look. So we're going to take one of the edges of this square and fold it inward so it meets the crease that is in the center of that little square shape. And the tip of this point that we're folding is going to be the side of the square that opens up rather than the side that is pointed towards me, which is closed. And again, you're going to make sure that the edge of this this uh, fold that we're doing meets the crease in the center and these two folded sides should meet evenly. So when you're done with that, it should look a little bit like a kite shape. See, you just fold those into the center. Those two corners of the square meet to make a little kite shape. Ta-da! I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. One of the nice things about making a crane is that it is very symmetrical. I'm going to fold this edge over. It's going to meet at the center crease and do the same to the other side. So once you're done, you will be holding something that is a bit more of a kite shape rather than a square. Looks a little bit like an ice cream cone. See the little top part there? It's the little ice cream on top of the cone. Anyway, you're gonna fold that over and we're just gonna add a crease here at the top of that where the cone meets the ice cream because that crease is gonna come in handy later. We're gonna use that crease to make another fold later on. And that's actually what we've been doing in this step as well. So you're gonna open the square back up. And now, are you ready? I'm gonna to totally blow your mind here. We're going to take that fold we've just done and invert it. So instead of folding on top of the square, we're going to fold it in along that crease that we've just made. So it's going to still come out to be looking like that kite shape, but this time we are folding inward rather than on top of the square. Just follow the crease that's already been made tuck it right in there and you should have a nice sharp fold now we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side open up that square tuck in the corners along the lines of the fold and we should get our kite shape back
Ta-da. All right, so check it out. If you lift up the little flaps of the kite, see those right there? Those are your wings. Look at them flap. And these little doodads here, if you've been following along, they should have room to move. They're sort of like legs right now, but they will eventually become the head and tail, legs. I'm not exactly sure, but it'll you'll, you'll get it. So we're going to do a very similar move to what we've just did, and we're going to fold the corner in again to the center where the paper is split. So we are not folding in the wing portion. These are the little legs, and you're folding from the corner into the center split of the paper. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. And this is one of the more complicated parts of the process. If you're having trouble here, try to take a look at when I hold it up to the camera and sort of see what I'm doing and see if you can replicate that. And if you get stuck here, that's okay. It's kind of hard to explain verbally. It's a whole lot easier if you have someone showing you what is done. So you're making an even narrower kite shape. An even narrower kite shape. Narrower. That's a tough word to say. And again, you're doing this on the side that can open in the center, not the side that has the wings. Make sure that the fold is flush with that center line. And you're going to repeat this on both sides as well. Once that's done, you can fold the wings back down. There should be a long and skinny shape. That little bump in the center, that top of the ice cream cone, is going to be the body of our crane. Now you're going to open up this long piece and fold it upwards. So now it's going to be pointing up into the air like the long majestic neck of a crane. You're going to do the same thing to the other side. Open it up, push the piece up into place. Look at that, starting to look like a bird. Then do the same thing on the edge, fold it down to make the beak and head, and the same on the tail and or legs. I think they're supposed to be legs. My idea of this is that it's a bird in flight and the legs are sort of dangling back. All right, now you ready for a magic trick? This is gonna really blow your mind. Pull gently on the wings and poof, you have added dimensions to your crane. And there you go. Now you have a crane. Now you just need to make 999 more and you get a wish. Oh, look, he wants to give you a little kiss. Mwah. Great job. You did it. So that's the end of my video. If you give it a shot, uh, I hope it turned out okay. And if it didn't, 
you can try it again. Uh, it took me a long time of practicing to get this down. There are some really tricky parts in there. This is just one of hundreds upon hundreds of other uh, origami uh, patterns that you can follow. I find it's a really sort of a, a meditative practice, like any form of art, I suppose, like painting or sculpting. Uh, you can kind of empty your head and just be in the moment with a piece of paper and trying to make something pretty out of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you didn't, there will be another one next week. Thanks for watching, and if you have a couple of bucks to spare, I strongly encourage you to donate it to the Gamut Theater. Uh, everybody's struggling, and it's not just to support the company, but it's to support the artists that make a living there. And that's really, really important, so that they're still there when we're all done with all this difficulty we're going through right now, and they can make some more art for us. So thanks very much, and take care.